Gibson and Harmon Brewing Company, brewers of R and H beer, the beer with a barrel of quality in every glass, presents Boston Blackie, starring Richard Calmer. <laughs> Well, Blackie, it's about time. Oh, I'm sorry, Mary. I left the apartment without my wallet and had to go back for it. Have you ordered? No, I was afraid I'd have to wash dishes if it didn't show up. All I have with me is 15 cents. But you have your smile. That should pay for the most expensive breakfast in town. I tried it <laughs> once. Did it work? No, I did. Washing dishes. <laughs> Well, let's see. What's well, good for breakfast on such a cheerful morning? Who's cheerful? I am. Just because I promised to meet you for breakfast. Oh, Blackie, you're sweet. Well, if you must know, Mary, this is why I'm cheerful. What's that? What does it look like? A very lavender envelope. With a very lavender odor about it, too. All right, all right. Who is she? The return address on the envelope says Anne Martin. Old flame of yours? Not even an old ember. <laughs> She's the wife of one of Shorty's old gangster pals, Harry Martin. Well, forgive my woman's curiosity, but why is she writing lavender letters to you? I don't know. I haven't opened it yet. Mind if I do? I'll mind if you don't. Excuse me. I will not. You're going to read that aloud. Maybe I'd better read it in a whisper. Oh, what does she say? Um, dear Boston Blackie. I could have guessed that much, but what does she want? Besides you. Well, let's see. Uh, nothing important, Mary. Just $50,000. It's very nice of you to answer my letter so soon, Blackie. I thought you would. But I didn't expect such a lovely drive in the country, too. Your request this morning for $50,000 sort of uh, stifled me, Anne. I thought the country air would do us good. Well, I guess I'd better explain. That's not a bad idea. I don't want you to give me $50,000. I'm talking about the money my husband put away before he went to jail. You remember my husband, don't you, Blackie? Harry, sure. He liked you, Blackie. I thought he might have told you where he put that 50000 Which 50000 The money he and the gang got in that Berkeley City job. He died in prison last year, you know. Yes, but I don't know what he did with the money, and even if that money is found, the police have a priority on it. Well, you can't blame a girl for trying. I guess we better go back to town. All right. What's on the radio Saturday afternoon? Turn it on, see. Thanks. No, not that one, Ann. Uh, that's my police radio. Two way at that. Oh, I'm sorry. That's what's then. Right. What are you doing with a two way radio? Playing policemen professionally? Oh, this radio is no joke. I bought it myself, and it comes in handy in a case every now and then. You're becoming a regular Boy Scout, aren't you? Oh, I really never use the thing except for laughs when Faraday's men are looking for me. Then I cut in and answer them back. <laughs> Policeman's little helper, aren't you? Let me tell you something right now, Boston Blackie. If I ever find Harry's money and you go to the cops, I have friends who will take care of you. Tell them not to bother, Anne. I can take care of myself. <laughs> Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Mary, did that come out of you? You just wait, Blackie, till you read what happens to the hazards of Hannah. You, uh, bring me the Sunday papers and then sit over there and read them yourself. That's very nice of you. I can't wait for Sunday. I like my thrills in color. Uh, hey, you want me to read you the hazards of Hannah? No, thanks. I'm not hep to Hannah's hazards. Ignorant, aren't you? Oh, here's something not in the funny papers that may be... A joker just the same on page one. What? Jack Winters, Bob Talmadge, and Esther Brown are back in town after spending several years at Uncle Sam's mansion up the river. And who are Jack Winters and uh, so forth? Well, I don't think you know them socially, Mary. They uh, came from the far side of the wrong side of the tracks. Well, then how do you happen to know them? I've been hopping back and forth over those tracks all my life. They were pals of Harry Martin's. And who is Harry Martin? Before he died in jail last year, he was Ann Martin's husband. 
Oh, oh, and Ann Martin is the girl you saw yesterday who wanted you to tell her where her husband hid his $50,000. Yes. Huh? And it's just possible that there's a connection between Ann Martin wanting to find out where her husband's money is hidden and the release of Harry's old pals. How? Well, Harry Martin was a pretty smart guy. He undoubtedly told just one of the three where he hid the 50000 and I think Ann, his wife, knows he did, too. Why do you think that? Ann found out her husband's old pals were going to be released from prison and knew that as soon as they got to town, whichever one knew where the money was would go and get it. Oh, I see. So she thought that maybe through you she could get the money before the others got out of jail, huh? Well, that's what it looks like to me. That's an angle, anyhow. Read your funnies. I'll be back soon. Where are you going? To see Ann again about this new angle. Ann Martin again, huh? You stay away from her, Blackie. You get a kick out of the hazards of Hannah, don't you? Well, I'm getting interested in the angles of Ann. What are you thinking about, Esther? Mm, it's good to be out of jail, Jack. Eating real food, breathing real air. Good. It's going to be perfect. Maybe. Say, I wonder where Bob is. I don't know. Where'd you go, Esther? None of your business. You were gone a long time. What's that to you? Nothing, I guess. I wasn't gone as long as you think. I came back for a few minutes and you were out. Where were you? Out. Doing a little asking around. About what? Your business is your business. My business is mine. Let's keep it that way, Esther. Maybe we better, huh? Yeah. Jack, look. Look who's walking down the street. Where? Crossing this way, going toward the alley. Hey, that guy looks familiar. Yeah. It's Boston Blackie. What's he doing down in this neighborhood? I don't know. We better find out, huh? Leave the waitress a buck. Let's duck out the sideway and meet him in the alley. Okay, let's go. I've been wanting to meet that guy down here in my territory for a long time. Easy, Esther, easy. Here he comes. Easy, Esther. Don't do anything you'd be sorry for. Shut up. Hello, Blackie. Well, Esther Brown, I just read about you getting out of jail. Don't reach for your gun, Blackie. There are two of us. And Jack Winters. I want fancy meeting you here. What are you doing down here, Blackie? Oh, just looking around. For trouble, maybe? You know I don't have to look for trouble, Jack. Trouble comes to me. What do you mean by that? Nothing. Have you been up to see Ann Martin yet? No. Why should we? He knows why we might, Esther. That means he knows too much. No, not yet. But I'm going up to see Ann and find out what there is to know. I don't think you ought to. I didn't ask for your advice. Then maybe we ought to fix you so you won't need it. <coughs> you swing fast, Jack, but not hard enough. <coughs> well, Jack won't wake up for a while, I guess. I seem to have a lullaby left hand. And now I think I can go and see Anne without interference. Blanky old pal. Come in. Why, thanks, but... Hey, now, wait a minute. What's the gag? Is there a body in there? Why don't you come in and see? What? And and, and I have to go through a long routine to get away from you? Oh, no. So long, pal. All right, Blanky. Stay where you are. It's that man again with that gun again. And it's you again with a body again. Get in here. And you better make up your story. You're going to need a good one. Awfully quiet in here, Faraday. Is this a... Murder scene? How could it be? With no photographers, fingerprint men, or the coroner? They're gone. And where's the body? It's gone, too. I've missed all the fun, haven't I? How was she killed? How did you know it was a she? A she lived here, didn't she? I found bodies in your apartment that weren't yours. Good point, Inspector. One of these days, maybe it will be my body. Then what are you going to do to keep your job on the force? I'll worry about that happy day when it comes. Faraday, are you really putting your gun away? Yeah, what about it? 
Don't tell me you're going to admit that sometime, somewhere, there's a murder I didn't commit. You listen to me, Blanky. I put my gun away because just once I want to see what kind of a man you are. My gun seems to make you want to try to get away. Try, Inspector? All right, all right. When I pull my gun on you, you always escape. Or maybe this time, with my gun put away, we can talk this thing out and no tricks. I hate to spoil your fun, Inspector, but this is one time I have no intention of running from you. Yeah? Why? Oh, well, I'm just tired of it. What happens when I duck you? I, I not only have to avoid every cop in town, but I have to solve the case for you to clear myself. No, that's too much trouble. Well, at last you're coming to your senses. What are you coming to, Faraday? The reason you killed Ann Martin. Did you find it out all by yourself? Oh, it didn't take much to find out. You saw Ann Martin yesterday afternoon. The whole neighborhood was talking about that car of yours. What should I have done to pick Ann Martin up? Driven down in a coal truck? Then you admit you saw her yesterday afternoon. I admit, Faraday. Yesterday afternoon from 2 o'clock until about 5.30. All right, that's fine. It now... comes under the heading of so what in my book. She was alive then. We've already established the time of death between the hours of 8 p.m. and 12 midnight Saturday. Then I suppose if I tell you exactly what I was doing in that time, you'll let me go and the fun will be over. Oh, no, Blackie. You don't get out of this, not even with a perfect alibi, 10 witnesses and 37 affidavits. My, but you sound convincing. But I'm sorry, Faraday, I didn't kill Ann Martin. Who did? I don't know, but give me 24 hours this side of the bars and... I'll not only get your killer for you, but the $50,000 Harry Martin stole before he went to jail. You're still looking for it. I happen to know that. What's the gag, Blackie? Gag? What's the idea of asking for 24 hours? You usually take it. Only when you have a gun on me. Okay, Blackie, get out of here. But I'm holding you to those 24 hours. You won't get one minute more. Now beat it before I change my mind. You mean you don't think I could get away from you if I wanted to? No, I'm letting you go. Now, if you'd made one false move while we were talking, I'd have shot you in your tracks. Now, get out of here. You would have shot me, huh? Oh, Faraday, catch. Whatever it is, I don't want it. I think you can use it, Faraday. It's your gun. And Martin wife of a dead gangster arranged a meeting with Blackie to find out from him if he knew the whereabouts of $50,000 hidden by her husband Harry before he went to prison. Blackie didn't know. Next day, Blackie noticed in the newspaper that Harry Martin's gangster pals had just been released from jail and realized that Ann Martin came to him for information about the missing money in hopes that she could get it before Harry's old friends. Following this lead, Blackie went to Ann Martin's apartment to be informed by Inspector Faraday that she had been murdered. Faraday gave Blackie 24 hours to clear himself of implication in Ann Martin's death. And as we return to our story, it's early the next morning, and Faraday's been chasing Blackie in a police car. Blackie, Inspector Faraday's car just turned the corner. Fine guy, that Faraday. He promises to leave me alone for 24 hours, and I have to waste half that time hiding from him in doorways. We better move, Mary. He might come back. Yes, that's right. Where are we going? You're going home. I'm going to follow that lead we got from Shorty. You think you ought to go down in that neighborhood alone? I'd rather go down there alone and have people stare at me than for us to go down there together and have people whistle at you. Well, I'm the one that should mind. Well, the trouble with you is you don't mind. You turn around and say thank you. What's wrong with that? It's part of a woman's job to make yourself attractive to men. Job? Huh? I get it. They whistle while you work. <laughs> All right. You go home and be a nice little girl while I run back down to the riverfront and pretend I'm a bad little boy. How's the jaw, Jack? Quit worrying about it, Bob. It's okay. I tell you, Jack, you shouldn't have swung on Blackie like that. He can give us trouble. Hello, boys. Oh, hi, Esther. Hi. Okay. Now that I'm here, let's get down to business. Well... Don't mind me. I, uh, I want to hear this. Hmm. Blackie. Well, Bob Talmadge and Jack Winters, too. Isn't this cozy? What do you want? You remember Harry Martin, don't you, Esther? Sure. But so what? He died in jail a year ago. But he had a wife. You know, our friend Ann Martin. Maybe that's what killed him. Then what killed his wife? Grief, probably. Maybe she's a late mourner. 
Ann Martin's dead? As of last night, Jack. She'll get used to it after a while. Now, which one of you killed her? Ain't any of us seen Ann Martin since we got back. I doubt that. But I'm going to give all three of you a break. Ann Martin was killed Saturday night between the hours of 8 p.m. and midnight. Now, let's have your alibis. All right, Jack. Where were you Saturday night between the hours of 8 p.m. and midnight? I went to Westfield to see some friends. Bud Thomas and his wife. They weren't home, so I come back. Very convenient of them. All right. You, Wesley. Where were you? I was up at 191st Street in the park. Doing what? Ducking squirrels? I was there at 9. It takes a long time to get back and forth. A horse ran away just about the time I got there. That's easily checked. How about you, Bob? I was to the movies at 86th and River Road. What was showing? A double feature. The Call of Africa, and believe me not, there was a newsreel and a cartoon. What was in the newsreel? Well, the usual stuff, a launch and some new styles and hats, new inventions, some pictures of the president. You got our alibis. We weren't near Ann when she got killed. Now beat it, will you? Sure, I'll beat it. But there'll be a murder rap against one of you for killing Ann Martin. And you'll have to beat that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Goodbye. Well, that's the last of the phone calls, Blackie. Bob Talmadge's alibi is solid, too. The movie theater said they showed a double feature and a newsreel last night. Well, all three of our suspects seem to be in the clear, don't they? Blackie, is this going to be one of those murders where you almost begin to think you did it? No, Mary. I think I know who killed Ann Martin. What? But I promised Faraday the $50,000, too. And the killer has to lead me to the money. Well, what are you doing in my office, Blackie? Have you come to admit you killed Ann Martin? No, Inspector Faraday. I wouldn't make you that happy. Well, two hours from now, I'm going to make myself happy. I'm going to lock you up. Ha, ha. You're a regular clock watcher, aren't you, Faraday? No wonder you never accomplish anything. Why, why, you could be on a, the, the hot on the trail of a killer and quit at the 5 o'clock whistle. I'm quitting on you at the end of 24 hours. That's all I promised you. And you've got just two hours left. I came down here to ask for more time, Faraday. Nothing doing. Oh, but plenty's doing. I know you're a killer. Then why do you need more time? Well, I, I, I want to get that $50,000 for you, too. Two hours is all you get. And if you don't have this thing solved by that time... You'll get the rest of your life. Who is it? Boston Blackie. Oh, for the... Let him in, Jack. Okay. I don't know why we have any truck with this bum, Esther. Shut up, Bob. Come in. Thanks. Now what do you want, Blackie? I want to make a deal. What do you mean, deal? One of you knows where Harry Martin hid his money. Whoever knows that is the one who killed Ann, too. Now, I know who that is. I'd like to share that 50000 I'd like a share of it to keep my mouth shut. Oh, well, now ain't that nice. Is it worth it to the killer to spend 25000 and go free? And uh, just so there won't be any double-crossing... I'll meet Ann's killer at the old mill on Mill Creek Road at 11 o'clock tonight. Then if the killer will lead me to Harry Martin's 50000 I'll take half the money and forget the whole thing. I hope Ann's killer is smart enough to tell time. I said 11 o'clock, and I don't like to wait even for 25000 bucks. Well, do we have to sit here and stare at each other? He may not know anything. Yeah, yeah, sure, that's what I think. He's bluffing. Look, all we got to do is stick together, and he won't be able to do anything to any of us. That is, if one of us did kill Ann Martin. Hey, uh, I just remembered. I got to go meet some fellas. Funny time to remember, Jack. I'll see you later. So long. Uh, What time is it, Esther? Nine o'clock. Oh. Oh, that reminds me. Hey, where are you going? I got an appointment, too. Well, ain't that pretty? All of a sudden, everybody has to go someplace. I won't be gone long. Uh, Stick together, she said. 
They don't wait two minutes before they leave me stuck. You killed Ann Martin. You said you'd meet your killer here. And you'd like to meet him too, wouldn't you, Esther? Sure. Wouldn't you? I want to know where that dough is. Maybe this is your answer coming up the path. It's Jack. He killed Ann. And he knows where the money is. Does he? Hey, Blackie. Guess you this figure this means I do. Esther, what are you doing here? She's here for the same reason you are, Jack. To hear the killer tell me where the money is. Bob killed Ann. I didn't say that. It could have been you. I think you're bluffing, Blackie. I know he is. Shh, here comes Bob. Hey, Blackie. Here, Bob. Okay, Blackie. Prove to me that I... Hello, Bob. We figured to split that money three ways, Bob. What are you two doing here? Everybody wants a piece of that 50000 Bob. I don't know where it is. All right, Bob. Unless you pay your way out of this jam, you'll have to pay for killing Ann Martin. What makes you think I killed her? Your alibi had a hole in it, Bob. I told you what movie I went to. If you check, you'd know those pictures were playing there Saturday night. But you said you saw a cartoon. Yeah, I did. Not Saturday night, Bob. Maybe you've been in jail too long to know this, but on Saturday night, movie houses throw out the cartoon to get in the extra late show. I tell you, I was there. I know you killed Ann Martin, Bob. But, uh, my deal still goes. Uh, you want... 25000 of Harry's 50, huh? You want to talk it over with your pals? I want to talk it over plenty. Me too. All right. Go over there. Get in my car. Talk in privacy all you want. I'll wait here till you come to a decision. Come on, Bob. Okay. Get in. Both of you. Okay, yeah. Hey, you can spill to us, Bob. Does Blackie have the right dope on you? Go ahead, Bob. We can beat this rap together. Did you kill her? Yeah. What'd she try to do? Hone in on Harry's dough? Yeah, she said she knew where it was. Unless I'd split it with a 50-50, she'd go to the cops about it. Maybe she was lying, but I couldn't take any chances. Then you know all the time where the dough was. You were going to get it without telling us. Shut up, Jack. Bob's the only one of us who knows where the dough is. I'm going to give Blackie half the money to let me go. No, you're not. Going out there and let Blackie have a little lead poisoning. We've all got guns. Now, where's the money, Bob? Where is it? Uh, okay, take your hands off me. Come on, come on, where is it? It's in a box bearing the Alton Cemetery near the first big tree off the road. Okay. Okay is right. We split the dough three ways. We don't cut Blackie in? We cut Blackie down. Come on. And pull your guns till you're right on him. He's pretty good with a gun himself. Well, so the conference is over. What goes? You do. Let him have it, boys. Okay, Blackie, you're through. I'm going to play. Hey, where's my gun? I don't have my gun. I don't have mine. Your guns? Oh, I forgot to tell you. I have them. Why, you... There's still three of us against one. Let's get him, Don't move any of you. What are you so tough about? So you have a gun. What good's it going to do you to kill us? I don't want to kill you. I want to preserve you for Faraday. You can't turn us over to the cops, either. Maybe you know which one of us killed Ann Martin, but you don't know what you really want to know. You don't know where the money is. Oh, but I do. I listen to you. You got a big mouth, not big ears. I forget what size ears I wear, but I heard every word you said. If you look inside the millhouse doorway here, you'll see my portable radio set. So what? There's two-way shortwave radio in my car. The microphone was on. I tuned you in on this radio set and heard every word you said. The money is buried in the Alton Cemetery. Pretty smart, aren't you, Blackie? I'll take that compliment slowly, Esla. But I think I'd better take you down to headquarters in a hurry. My 24 hours are more than up, and Faraday's the fretful type. <laughs> Oh, Mary, it's about time. I'm sorry, Blackie, I missed my bus, and another one didn't come along for 15 minutes. Have you ordered yet? No, I was afraid I'd have to wash dishes if you didn't show up. All I have here is 15 cents. Oh. <laughs> oh, that makes you happy. Oh, 
no, no. This is what makes me happy. Letter from a boyfriend? It's um, from a man, yes. You jealous? No. Aren't you at least a bit jealous? No. Well, aren't you joking? Yes. Oh, that's better. <laughs> What's he want? Oh, nothing much. Just a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars? Isn't that awful? What kind of men do you know writing you for money? Oh, he's not a bad sort. Not bad. He's criminal. What's the hundred for? Blackmail? No, black suit. The man's my tailor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 